Good morning, children. I hope that you all are fine. And you know that uh, we're going to enter the next topic. And in the part two, we have focused uh, till uh, abiotic agents of pollination. Today's topic, we're going to focus on biotic agents of pollination. You know that gamete transfer is very much essential so that the male gametophyte, the pollen grain, which carries the tube nucleus and the two male gamete required for fertilization. In order to aid in fertilization, gamete transfer called pollination should occur. So there are a lot of adaptation that plants have to undergo. So the plant, in order to attract the insects, they may have a nectar, which is a reward. To attract the flowers will be colorful and they may have some scent glands by which it can be attracted. So a lot of adaptations are there. So what are the various features an uh, insect pollinated flowers must possess? In the previous uh, uh, video, you could have seen about all the different agents which I have given you with the technical terms. Watch my uh, second uh, video where you will be able to know about the various agents. The flowers generally are large, colorful and they are fragrant. The fragments will spread everywhere so the insect can get easily attracted and they are rich in nectar which is a reward. And nectar and pollen grains are the floral rewards for pollination. Small flowers form inflorescence, that means arrangement of flowers on the floral buds. And to make them visible, many inflorescence will join together. That means many flowers will join together to make it so attractive. The flowers, we have seen about racemose and cymose in grade 11. I think you can remember that. The flowers pollinated by flies and beetle secrete a fall adder to attract these animals also. The pollen grains are generally light in weight, so the insect can carry it. But in case of anemophily, we saw that the pollen grains are light and it is non sticky. And in case of uh, hydrophily or water pollination, we have seen pollen grains are covered by mucilaginous coating. And in case of entomophily or insect pollinated flowers, the pollen grains are light in weight and generally they are sticky. So the sticky, uh, because they are sticky means because they can adhere or adhesive or they can easily adhere to the insects. So when the animal comes in contact with another's or uh, means uh, when animal comes in contact with an, uh, another flower with an anther and the stigma, its body gets pollen grains. When it comes in contact with the stigma, it results in pollination. So, there are a lot of advantages. For example, there are some association called symbiont relationship. What is symbiont relationship means? It is a relationship where the two interacting organisms are benefited. That means I have two organisms, say it is A. A is giving some benefit for B. B is giving some benefit for A. For example, in grade 11, you could have learned about lichens. So, what are lichens? Uh, lichens are nothing but Lichens are an association between an algae and a fungi. Lichens are an association between an algae and a fungi. So what does the algae do? The algae will prepare food for the fungi. The fungi will help in absorption of moisture as well as they will get some nutrients for even for algae also. The main thing is both of them are mutually benefited. So there are some reward which a flower gives even for the animals also. Amorpha phallus, you know, it is the tallest flower of six feet uh, height. And there is a uh, symbiotic relationship between a moth and a yucca plant. And both of them exhibit symbiosis. If one organism is not there, other cannot exist. If yucca is not there, <coughs> moth cannot exist. If moth is not there, yucca cannot exist. The moth will deposit its eggs on the locule. You know what is locule? The free space between the ovule and the ovary. The flower will get pollinated by the moth. So the moth is uh, the so flower is getting benefited. They are getting pollination. What does the benefit the moth arrives? The moth will derive and benefit. The larvae are nourished by the locule that is by the uh, uh, yucca plant itself. The larvae comes out of the egg as seed starts developing. So you can see this is actually the moth and the yucca plant where the moth will lay the eggs on the locule of the uh, uh, yucca plant. 
So yucca is getting pollinated and yucca will nourish the larvae of the moth. So both of them are mutually benefited. Many insects consume the pollen or nectar which is a reward given by the flower to the animals which is aiding in pollination. But they bring, will not bring any pollination. The ultimate role is they should bring about pollination. They won't bring any pollination. Instead, they will go and take the pollen grain and nectars. They are called nectar robbers. So if you look about Clistogamous flower, that is a bisexual flower where Clistogamous, they will go only self-pollination that is called autogamy. But uh, uh, if you look about Chasmogamous and Chitinogamy and Xenogamy, definitely cross-pollination, there is a lot of chances and Xenogamy is definitely a cross-pollination. But when you go look about a Clistogamous flower undergoing only autogamy, Continuous self-pollination will result in inbreeding depression. What is inbreeding depression? About that, we'll be learning about in a chapter called Strategies for Enhancement of Food Resources. To avoid self-pollination and encourage cross-pollination, there are some devices in the plants. What are the devices? <clears throat> I can say that there are a lot of devices. To understand this, I'll tell you, uh, uh, that is, all insemination, it is from the chapter number 3 in human reproduction, all insemination will not lead to fertilization. The sperm is released into the female reproductive tract, but there is no ova, no fertilization. Ova is there, but the sperms are not there. That means no fertilization. Similar way, here the pollen grain is needed before the stigma become receptive or stigma become receptive before the release of pollen grain. So we have a technical term called protoandry and protogyny which comes in a dichogamy that is avoiding synchronization. So what is synchronization? Synchronization means there must be the timing where the anther and stigma must be released simultaneously. But in case of protoandry, the andrisium matures first before the gynesium. In protogyny, the stigma or gynesium becomes receptive first before the adhesion, by which the synchronicity is highly minimized. Since there is no synchronicity in release of pollen grain and receptiveness of stigma, self-pollination is prevented. Next is the arrangement of anther and stigma at different position. If the gynesium or you can say the stigma and anther are so close together, definitely pollination will be aided, that is self-pollination. But if the distance is far, or we can say the anther is somewhere and stigma is somewhere such a way that anther is not the top, anther is below them. So we require some agents of transfer. In these cases also, what we can occur is uh, uh, self-pollination is prevented. Self-incompatibility is one of the nice topic children to be discussed, where the stigma is actually a receptive platform or a landing platform where the pollen grains are received. The stigma will perceive that it is self or non-self pollen. If it is a self pollen, it is genetic mechanism where they will reject their own pollen grains. So it is a genetic mechanism to prevent self pollen from the same flower or another flower or other flower of the same plant from fertilizing by inhibiting pollen germination or pollen tube growth. If it is some other pollen grain, what they will do, they will accept and pollen germination will take place, pollen tube also will take place. If the self pollen, pollen germination will be stopped, our pollen tube growth will be stopped by forming a plug called callous plug, by which the development of pollen grains or germination of pollen grains and the development of pollen tube is inhibited by the self pollen. If it is a non self pollen, definitely it will be accepted. It is actually a type of a in self incompatibility, a genetic mechanism to prevent the self pollination. Next is in male and female flowers are present on the same plant, that means monoecious condition. So, if male and female flower are present on the same plant, it will prevent uh, that means I'm saying about a plant which is actually a monoecious. The flower condition is unisexual male flower condition separately, female flower separately. Since flowers are separate in that case, they can prevent autogamy provided they are chasmogamous, but the gitnogamy cannot be prevented. It can prevent only the autogamy. But how to prevent even the gitnogamy? 
dioecious plant sexes are separate so if you go to a garden and in the garden if you are able to see uh, maybe you are going to a papaya garden in season 1 you are seeing every tree is having the flowers maybe after the next means after a month you are going to see more half of or half or most of the uh, trees are having the fruits the papaya and many of them have have having only the flowers what could be the main reason is male papaya cannot be a fruit because there is absence of ovary female only can be a fruit so for the sexes are separate uh, that is called dioecy which will prevent both autogamy and gynogamy also therefore all the papaya you eating is genetically different so till this i think uh, you may be clear which we have discussed now now this is a very important prima question for your board exam pollen pistil interaction what is pollen pistil interaction pollen pistil interaction is a type of interaction children it is actually a very 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 important interaction where it is a chemical dialogue between a uh, pollen grains and the pistil that is accepting the compatible and non compatible pollen grain which can be accepted which can be rejected so the first process involved is recognition which will recognize the stigma will recognize the compatible and non compatible pollen if it is a compatible pollen then pollen germination will take place where pollen grain will swell because of endosmosis germ pore will be expressed and from the intern layer germ tube will be formed so first is recognition of a compatible and non compatible pollen grains by the stigma after recognizing the compatible pollen pollen germination will take place if it is non compatible pollen grain then definitely pollen germination will be stopped so recognition of compatible and non compatible pollen grains by stigma the second is if it is a compatible one pollen germination will take place pollen tube is formed what is siphonogamy the development and entry of pollen tube through the style of the gynecium is called as siphonogamy that means pollen tube is allowed and they are crossing through the style after that crossing through the style they will reach the ovary in the ovary they will reach the ovule or the megasporangium in the megasporangium there is an area called micropyla and where integuments are absent where we have an important thing called egg apparatus which is made up of uh, two synergids and one egg cell in the synergids only we have filiform apparatus the pollen tube enters so what is porogamy porogamy is a process where the entry of pollen tube into the synergids through filiform apparatus is called as porogamy which is located at the micropyla end so after recognition pollen germination takes place pollen tube enters through the style and enter in into the embryo sac and after entering into the embryo sac double fertilization takes place inside the embryo sac where the generative cell of course you know they will divide mitotically they will form two male gamete the first male gamete and the second male gamete the first male gamete fuses with an egg cell to form a diploid zygote and the second male gamete is a haploid fuses with a central cell with two polar nuclei condition is n plus n plus n never put 2n for this results in the formation of primary endosperm nucleus which is triploid which transform into a primary endosperm cell so these are the five important events now with the <coughs> sorry now with the help of a diagram we can check how the pollen pistil interaction takes place so first is pollen pistil interaction is recognition pollen grains entering see here the pollen grains are uh, non compatible here it is also non compatible here non compatible yet somewhat compatible it is completely compatible so the compatible one so recognition is done after recognition of compatible pollen grain the right type of pollen grain which is accepted by the pistil pollen germination takes place and siphonogamy is going on after going for siphonogamy porogamy is occurring here they entering into the micropylar end through the filiform apparatus present at the synergids so pollen grains germinate on stigma to produce a pollen tube through one of the germ pore the contents of the pollen grain move into the pollen tube pollen tube grows through the tissue of stigma and style and reaches the ovary if the pollen is compatible incompatible wrong type the pistil will reject if it is compatible maybe in two cell or three cell condition undergoes and further the events are continued 
In plants which is a three celled condition, that is, a pollen tube carrying two male gametes from the beginning, pollen tube reaches the ovary, then enters through the micropylar end called porogamy, then enters into the synergist through the filiform apparatus. The filiform apparatus present at the micropylar part of the synergids guide the entry of pollen tube. So here you can check here the male gametes or you can see the pollen tubes are entering through the filiform apparatus where the male gametes are received where the first male gamete fuses with an egg cell. Second male gamete fuses with the, the central cell enclosed with the uh, two polar nuclei. But in case of genetic engineering where we will be learning in biotechnology chapter, a plant breeder can manipulate pollen pistol interaction even in incompatible pollination to get a desired hybrids. I'll tell you hybrid, hybrid, there are many differences about that we'll be discussing in biotechnology. After entering into the one of the synergids, so you can say there are two synergids with two filiform apparatus, they may enter into any one of the synergids. The pollen tube will release the two male gametes. They are releasing the two male gametes. Once they have released the two male gametes, what will occur? The first male gametes move toward the egg cell and fuses with the nucleus of an egg cell called syngamy to form a diploid zygote. The second male gamete moves to the polar nuclei which is located inside the central cell and fuses with them to produce a primary endosperm nucleus which is triploid about that we have discussed with the equation as it involves the fusion of three haploid nuclei it is called triple fusion. After that what will occur? The egg cell will transform into the zygote. Primary endosperm nucleus, I mean, sorry, central cell with two polar nuclei transform to primary endosperm nucleus, which will transform to primary endosperm cell. Antipodals will degenerate. Synergids also will become degenerated. So, in the two types of fusion, that is, syngamy and triple fusion, takes place in a single embryo sac. It is called as double fertilization. The central cell after triple fusion becomes primary endosperm cell and develops into an endosperm and endosperm will nourish the developing zygote which transform into an embryo. So embryo if they want to develop into further stages if there is no endosperm the embryo development will not be there in angiosperms. So these are the very important events so about that we have discussed now we can check here I'll just go with the next slide. So, recognition of compatible and non-compatible pollen grains by the stigma and uh, if it is compatible, pollen germination takes place, pollen will, grains will swell because of endosmosis, germ pore become exposed and through which pollen tube formation takes place. The pollen tube moves through the style called siphonogamy and enters into the ovary. After reaching the ovary, they enter into the ovule, the megasporangium and reaches the embryo sac to the uh, micropolar end where we have the synergids which we have may have filiform apparatus through which the pollen tube enters and it will burst and it, it will release the two male gamete into the embryo sac where the first male gamete fuses with an egg cell to form a diploid zygote that process is called syngamy. The second male gamete fuses with the central cell results in the formation of primary endosperm nucleus which will transform into primary endosperm cell which is called triple fusion because three haploid nucleus are fused.